NFTs are heading into waters that traders thought they left behind long ago, with sales volume that on any given day mirrors the market in 2021. The significant downturn isn't stopping innovation and it's not stopping building. And just breaking today, Sky Mavis, the creator of Axie Infinity, has announced that a top NFT project on Ethereum is moving to their Ronin blockchain. Beginning with their upcoming Genkai Mint this week, the Cyberkongs will be calling the Ronin blockchain home, marking one of the biggest projects to move across blockchains that we've seen to date. The Cyberkongs are an early Ethereum NFT project that first minted their Genesis collection back in March 2021. That was before iconic collections like Board Ape Yacht Club or Azuki were ever born. To date, the Cyberkong collections have traded over $300 million on secondary markets, ranking 26th all time on Crypto Slam's collection rankings. Sky Mavis has a storied history with highs and lows that can't be matched by anyone in Web3. From Axie Infinity being the top selling NFT collection of all time, bringing in $1.3 billion of revenue and trading for over $4.2 billion in secondary sales volume, to then their Ronin blockchain being the victim of the largest hack that the crypto world has ever seen. That was when North Korean hackers stole over $625 million from the Ronin blockchain. Sky Mavis has been driving NFT adoption through blockchain gaming, the play to earn model, innovative collectibles, and now with their first ever PFP collection. I'm Yehuda Petcher, NFT strategist at Forecast Labs. And today I'm joined by Kathleen Osgood, the Director of Business Development at Sky Mavis, and Henry the Grape, Community Manager at CyberKongs, also a member of the leadership team at CyberKongs, and also my younger brother. Kathleen and Henry, thanks so much for being here today. I imagine you're both really, really busy with this big news breaking today, but it's great to see you and thank you. So let's get into what's really happening here, starting with um, CyberKongs and Axie. Both have such deep lore and such faithful communities. Both are primed to see great success in the future on their own. So really what brought the two of you together and what does this partnership bring to the Ronin NFT ecosystem? Ronin is the blockchain that fuels Axie Infinity. It's created by Sky Mavis. And when we created Axie Infinity, we had all of these scaling issues to tackle. Uh, as a, the pioneer in the space, we didn't really know what was to come. And so we had to build our own blockchain. And with that, we started building our own infrastructure as well. Something we really did right was building community and generating this hype and kind of being the kings of that initially as this took off the ground. And we realized quickly that we can share this infrastructure and this community with other projects and with other games. So we've taken in a, a, a little bit more permission-based approach in comparison to some of the other blockchains out there that are allowing everybody and anybody to build on them. So we've been taking this approach where a studio or a game comes in and they're going through a rigorous process through our operating platform. And Henry knows it now at this point. We recently announced our shift to DPoS in, and five new game studios that we selected to build on Ronin. And once they onboard into us, we realized that this operating platform we set up, it, it's sustainable and it could scale. So not only do we want to bring on more gaming projects into Ronin because we have this capacity, but we also want to get back to our roots uh, not get back to our roots, but expand upon our roots within the Web3 space. Uh, and so we, it was a couple, it was actually oh, probably less than a month ago when we decided, hey, we can actually open this up and let's explore this other territory. And Trung gave the go ahead, our CEO, and we had this list of native Web3 IP. And I was talking to all of these founders. I was put in touch with Henry and Jeff and I were on a call with him. and everything just started to make sense because with some of these other projects they were like oh maybe we can launch a lesser collection on ronin you know because they didn't really want to fork over their genesis collections uh and when i spoke to henry and he talked about the genkai collection we don't believe that's a lesser collection we be we really believe that this collection on it in its own is substantial the the Genkai really spoke to us that there's an Asian influence to it. They were launching within a month uh, and we now had expressed this interest to take on some of this Web3 IP and deeply integrate them into our ecosystem. And we, ju we just know that we have that, this gaming ecosystem at our core. We're focused on being a gaming ecosystem. And we really believe that with partnerships, with pioneers like CyberKongs, who are doing really cool things with, with their technology and have built this incredible IP, we can build something very interesting here. Is this the beginning of 
Ronin's metaverse. Would you call it a metaverse or is this gonna be, you know, kind of still a focused gaming ecosystem as opposed to metaverse, which I don't even think really has a definition still. Web3 enables and what Axie has done in itself, it's an MMO in itself. You see net metaverse and you think of place. Um, and I think that all of the experiences that we do have and the opportunity for CyberCogs and other IP to integrate into this, it's gonna form a, a type of metaverse that people haven't really thought of yet. Each blockchain seems to have their own identity. They have collectibles that become their specialty. On Ethereum, you're, you're used to seeing PFPs, the profile pictures. You're used to seeing art on um, Polygon. It's big brand collectibles. It's DeFi, it's some gaming, and Tezos' art. Ronin is always known as the, um, the blockchain for gaming. Was it always your plans to evolve and grow beyond just the universe of axes? Or in some way, has the current NFT ecosystem caused you to pivot or change your, your philosophy? I don't believe we've pivoted at, at all. I think what CyberKongs has done, even within Play and Collect, they've always had this this root of gaming at their core. And so by having them in our ecosystem, we're just allowing that expansion and enabling that. And to be honest, we wouldn't have partnered with them if they did not want to venture into gaming or at least have utility within our gaming ecosystem. Interesting. Okay, yeah, I, I can see where, where the, the visions actually align then. Henry, this does the move to the Ronin blockchain alter any of the CyberKong's visions or plans? Did it change your vision or does it just enhance things you are already considering or already in the midst of building? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. It, it enhances uh, the CyberKong's ecosystem. We're like a, a, a an Ethereum mainnet based project, right? That's where we were initially launched from, but we came from the Axie Infinity world. Uh, we have the OGs like Coco Bear and Owl and Clumsier guys that were like really deeply rooted within that ecosystem with a really large base out of Southeast Asia. So to, to have the opportunity to come over to Ronin to, to build alongside them, like we have a, an actual team um, that that's built that's built you know the largest web3 gaming ecosystem uh, and we want to be a part of that because at our core we are a gaming ecosystem so every bit about this partnership only enhances everything that CyberKongs have already brought to the table with our innovation uh, and who we are within Web3. This just magnifies it. And Henry, now CyberKongs having exposure to three different blockchains, uh, beginning on Ethereum, then on Polygon, now on Ronin, you'll know better than anyone. How much does the blockchain that your assets live on matter? And maybe ideally would projects prefer to be omnichain, exist on all of the major chains and, and become interoperable? We're proud uh, to, to be cross-chain, right? Um, and, and to be able to have a bridge between, you know, Mainnet and Ronin for Genkai to go back and forth. But the reality is, yeah, being cross-chain, I think keeps us uh, keeps us nimble. It allows us to be able to, to use maybe the best parts of what those ecosystems are to our advantage. I said the other day, I said, you know, often in professional sports, you have uh, players that leave teams and they leave teams to go to a, to another team. And that doesn't mean the team that they left is a bad team. That team may be great in and of themselves. But at the end of the day, uh, CyberKongs are here to win championships. And we really believe when it comes to the gaming side of the house and when it comes to all of the other things that Ronin is, is looking to expand into, yeah, we wanna be a part of that. It just, it makes sense on so many levels from the, from the, from the fact that our communities are really similar. Both of our communities have asked for this, by the way. So to, to build out our gaming ecosystem on Ronin is an opportunity like we just, we, we wouldn't pass up. And is the synergy between communities one of the, the more appealing things about Ronin, one of the bigger draws for you to want to move across chains? Or are there things that, that you wanted to build that maybe couldn't be done on Polygon, but could be done on Ronin? I think it's just, it, it's such a unique ecosystem because they've been doing it for so long. Like there's nobody that's been building uh, and especially on the gaming side of things as long as uh, as long as long Ronin has. And and with their deep synergy with their gaming ecosystems, you know, like Axie Infinity, they have the contacts, they have the builders, they've got the developers, they've got the, uh, the biz dev side of the house, they've got the PR side of the house, they have the marketing side of the house. So like, it's this, it's almost like this suite of tools that has become available to us. Question for both of you, um, which is the Asian market is a key focus right now for NFT builders. The CyberKong's Genkai collection, well, the goal of it sounds like it was to expand in that region. What is it about Asia that has builders so focused on that region right now? Maybe Kathleen, if, if you'd like to start. 
when you look at how Axie Infinity got off the ground, that was in Southeast Asia. And we offered this new paradigm of gaming and asset ownership for these folks, and it spread like wildfire. We also, they also, certain countries in Asia, not all of them aren't facing the same regulatory challenges that we, ha we are here in the United States. And so by uh, targeting some of these other countries in Asia, you're able to tap into the emerging markets. And these Asian countries have always been more prone to get excited and take on like digital collectibles first. And you see that a lot coming out of Japan. And that is a market that we have just really figured out how to tap into. So I think you're going to see a lot of these major teams like Yuga see the opportunity in Asia and kind of piggyback on what some of us have done initially and target that. And we have this massive community in Asia still. You know, this is our third bear market right now with our community and we're, we're going stronger than ever. You know, of course you see that drop off in players and people may say the Asian community has or may think that it has dropped off, but we are still going very strong within those markets. I think when uh, in like 21, when, when NFTs were really starting to take off, I think a lot of that action um, was coming out of like, let's say the United States and it was coming out of Europe as far as like PFPs and, and the, you know, the, the parabolic rise in, in secondary pricing. But the reality was like Asia was there, Asia was building. Um, and we've always seen Asia as a place that we wanted to plant our flag because we've got a large community there already. Um, Mio, our artist, has an affinity for Japanese-inspired art, so it was a it was sort of a natural fit from that perspective. When we decided it was about a year ago that this is where we wanted to go, um, market sentiment aside, we're like, this is what we're going to build towards. This is this is 100%. Um, the area of the world we want to be. This is the type of art that we want to put out there. We don't just play to the secondary market and, and what everybody thinks your floor price is going to be a day or a week after mint. We were playing this long game. We had already been working our connections in Asia for the better part of a year, but to be able to, to be, able to be uh, joined with them, it just brings so many more opportunities to the table in the future. So there's some teams that are building out Axie games. I mentioned this earlier. And there's one in particular in South Korea that created this smash hit called Annie Pong. And it did like hundreds of millions of downloads, 2.2 billion in revenue. And that's really what we're trying to do with having them build an Axie game. You know, and so we're really trying to be, create this synergistic ecosystem by going slow and picking the right partners, as opposed to everybody, you know, kind of come on board because we know we have this potential for crossover if we, if we do it right and it's not cannibalistic. And so, You'll see a lot of our partnerships, even one um, coming out of India. It's a it's called Bold, and it's a cricket-based blockchain game. And India has a, a population of under it's 600 million under the age of 25. Like they are prepped and prime for blockchain adoption. They they've been relatively crypto friendly. They are a very mobile first country. And if we can capture some of that market and continue to expand throughout Asia, that's a massive win for us. Yeah, and, and Kathleen, you mentioned this is now your the, the third bear market that Axie Infinity, Ronin have, have um, cycled through. Henry, I think this is, well, it feels like our first substantial one. I'm curious, Kathleen, do you still see P2E gaming as, um, as the event that that funnels people to the blockchain to nfts um or or to any degree has has your vision for how big pde gaming uh has that lessened we have been shifting away from the narrative of play to earn to more so you know, this can enable ownership of assets and every, I think everyone in the industry mostly has been doing that because you see what the repercussions are within this type of market and all of these new players coming on board, not really understanding what can happen to their assets when the market takes a downturn. But we also have to plan for this next generation of games that are leveraging this technology in a ownership based way. And that is by partnering with some teams that are building you know, a 4v4 top-down shooter that are slowly adding Web3 elements and, and skins into the game, such as Machines Arena. You know, I, I feel like there's two distinct sections. It's, you know, these Web2 games, 
themed games that are coming into Web3. They're adding Web3 elements, and then there's like full-on Web3 games, which is what really made the industry explode in itself. And a lot of people are so shy to acknowledge that that worked, you know? But I think the question is, how can we improve that Web3, that play-to-earn side of things, so that it is sustainable in a bear market? And that's by continuously improving and making a fun game. I'm sure everybody knows Owl here, but incredible engineer. He's developed the ERC 721X token that's going to be used in this launch. CyberKongs has been so progressive within their technology. Like they really have been at the forefront of initiating initiating this new innovation into this space. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the ERC 721X. I do want to get into into this new tech, this innovative tech and uh, tech that, that enhances security, something that's been desperately needed in the space. Both Ronin and CyberKongs have firsthand experience with the dark side of the blockchain. Starting with you, Kathleen, the Ronin blockchain was, was victim of the largest hack that has ever taken place in crypto. Um, there was over $625 million worth of crypto stolen from the blockchain. Did the hack of this magnitude cause significant changes internally at Sky Mavis? Um, and how has it in impacted Axie Infinity and Ronin and just the vision going forward? Yes, this hack changed everything for us. Uh, it's an incident that led us to become a fully anti-fragile, zero-trust organization. We've implemented rigorous internal security measures to prevent future attacks. All code has been fully reviewed and optimized and security experts have audited our entire infrastructure. The magnitude of this was significant, but the fact that we're still here and building and bringing on some of the greatest projects and builders to continue to build with us should speak volumes to people. We of course had the shift to DPoS. Uh, the hack itself was, uh, it was not a technical flaw. It was rather a socially engineered hack. And what we've done by adding more validators, uh, including ones like Google uh, to verify the blocks, it. You know, we are in a position where we are doing everything we can to ensure that this never ever happens again. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of how everyone handled it and very excited to partner with CyberKongs who are implementing some of these new features. Like they're forcing us to, to launch these 721, uh, ERC 721X tokens on Ronin. It enables some of these NFTs to be locked up for certain periods of time. and. You can actually get really creative with that. And I just think what CyberKongs is doing is they are setting a precedent for the future as to how we evolve with NFTs. One of my favorite things in the entire NFT ecosystem is, well, it is contracts. It is token standard. Henry, I hope you can speak to a bit. Um, I do want to touch on your experience with that same, that dark side of, of this crypto world. Um, you had your own experience with it, something that I think shaped you as a collector and trader. And I'm curious how you took that experience now as a builder with the CyberKongs into the Kongs team and how, again, how that has impacted you and the products you're all building now. Yeah, I, I, hard to believe that was almost two years ago. Uh, I got uh, I got fished. Things like the ERC 721X contract allows you to have an NFT in a hot wallet, any wallet, let's just say. And if God forbid that wallet is ever compromised, um, it's it, it's locked with another wallet. It, you don't have to lock it with another wallet, okay? But that's the safety feature of the 721X. It allows you to lock it with another wallet. And so it basically allows you, especially in a gaming environment, which obviously this is part of where we're gonna go with Genkai, uh, it allows you um, to have that NFT in a hot wallet to be able to play games um, and still have that safety of, of having that asset locked by another wallet. So Discord safety, blockchain safety. It's just always been a top priority of Kong's. So to be able to bring this tech over to the Ronin side of the house, um, where safety is obviously a, a, a big piece of what they're doing as well, it just makes sense. I want to talk about the current NFT climate. It's it's rough out there in NFT land. Uh, secondary slows have, so, have slowed, secondary sales have slowed down to levels we've not seen since 2021. I'm probably not alone wondering this now, if, if collectors are willing to mint anything new. How challenging is it to build in this market and how important is it to still offer collectors something innovative, something new, and, and how rewarding does it need to be and how soon does it need to be rewarding? Henry, that might be perfect for you to start. 
Yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, everybody has their eyes on this market and when it comes to uh, the price of our collection, which is 0.25 Ethereum for each NFT. Uh, and along with our airdrops, to Kathleen's point, anybody who has airdropped this as a, uh, you know, a holder or as a reward um, will have that NFT locked up for a period of six months. Um, and the only way that you can unlock that before the period of six months is to is to pay for it. Starting at mint price at 0.25 on day one, uh, again, this is a six month, like let's call it vesting period. So 90 days in, it'll be half the cost to unlock it. And and make no mistake, there's some people that are like, why are you holding my NFT hostage? We're not, we're giving you something. We're literally giving you something for free. But we also recognize that there is a secondary market to the collectible side of the house. We know that that exists. We have uh, the most metaverse land of any PFP project of which we're building on it. Uh, in fact, we'll have our, um, our experience in the sandbox going live in uh, in season four. Uh, and honestly, it's like the cleanest build of any sandbox experience. We've dumped a ton of, uh, when I say money, into our advanced FBX files, our 2D sprites for our holders. And at the end of the day, I think people can at least look at what we've done and trust that CyberKongs are gonna continue to be building out experiences for our holders that are gonna really be top tier. I obviously cannot share the CyberKong's plans, but we wanted, this is the first third party NFT launch on Ronin. This is a big deal. This is the first time a non-Axie asset will be launched on Ronin. And we wanted to make sure that it was not a cash grab. And so that's something we work deeply with CyberKongs on is like, what are the plans? I need to understand your roadmap. Where can this go? But adding Ronin into the picture, I think it just furthers what is possible with this and, and with this team and expanding this IP and getting into gaming. And, and I would love for the Axie community members to start brainstorming and now CyberKongs too on like where this can go because we are open to that type of expansion. If all of a sudden we have an idea from the community that's like, hey, you guys should, you guys should have you know, CyberKongs land plots and integrate some assets into there and maybe have a mini game and take from the builders program game. We are open to those suggestions and we really want to work deeply with these communities who are known for giving feedback that is valuable. It's interesting to hear you really do listen to the communities and their feedback and their ideas. And and do you have any, do you have examples where you have built things that have been suggested by the communities and are there avenues for the community to present these type of ideas to you? Yes, absolutely. A, a lot of what we have built has been based on this community back and forth, even, you know, origins in itself. It is very much based on how the community reacts to things. One of our partners, uh, initial partners, it's called Tribes. Uh, the founder, he he built, com he led building communities at Scopely and King. He led community for Candy Crush and God of War and other ones. And now he's building a social MMO on Ronin but he's also building a community engagement platform that enables individuals to participate in some aspects of the game as it's being built. The more you enable the community, the more they will give back. That's exactly what happened with Axie. We gave people this new paradigm of asset ownership in Web3. We let them own their assets and they could be invested in the open market. What did they do? They gave back, they built, they created DAOs and guilds and infrastructure and created content and podcasts and anything you can imagine they created. Now imagining structuring that and rewarding them even further for their contributions. And that's what Tribes is doing with their platform, which is going to be available to all the other teams building on Ronin. Henry, the Cyber Kongs are a different breed. And, and so similar to, to what Kathleen said, the community's feedback is valued. Does the team take that feedback and look for ways to build it? And, and again, uh, is the team always looking for new ways to integrate community ideas? Yeah, you know, in, in, in thoughtful ways, because, you know, community, um, the community has, has one, when I say they have, uh, they have one perspective. And sometimes behind the veil of a project or a, a blockchain, the perspective is different. This move to Ronin, is feedback from our community. Like we know that our community is gonna be jazzed about this. 
it didn't probably happen in the time that maybe they thought. There's probably a lot of people that thought in, in 2021 uh, that we should have been looking to team up with Axies. And of course, like it would have been awesome if this would have happened then or in 22. But the reality is like everybody is on their roadmap and you come together when the timing's right. The other side of it is this. Uh, Web3 in general right now, to your point about the market that you had made before, a lot of what Web3 is right now is people that are just looking for gains. And, and I feel like that is something that is really hard to build towards, certainly in the short term. Genesis Kongs hold the record for um, all time high of a PFP on the secondary, uh, 215 Ethereum. How are you going to meet that person's expectations? Like the person who bought that on the secondary paid somebody else for that NFT. How are we as a project going to meet that expectation? It's it's a losing battle. And so many projects are faced with that, meeting the expectations of people that are in it for nothing more than secondary value. One of the things we pride ourselves on, and, and obviously Axies have a, have a really deep community as well, is like we're all building for this vision of what Web3 is going to be years from now. It takes time, like we're pioneers. What's on the horizon for this evolving Ronin ecosystem now with Axies and CyberKongs living under the same roof? Will we see the development of IP together? Um, and will we see other PFP projects come over to Ronin? Um, maybe some that are established, whether it's from Ethereum, whether it's from you know any of these other blockchains. And will we ever see art marketplaces on Ronin or will it always be um, gaming focused? I think the art comes into play in relation to games, right? So that could possibly happen. I've been talking to many existing Web3 communities. Again, it comes down to, we do not want Ronin to be a lesser chain. Uh, so that is a little bit hard to get around uh, sometimes. You know, I think we need to step-by-step step start working with people that have those same values as us that have those same values of enablement and reciprocity and community and listening and being honest and are driving towards the adoption of web3 in a unique way that's not just like hey let's take all these people's money we are not about that I, we want to build a home where ip can take off where maybe there's some massive ip that comes into our ecosystem that doesn't have a game but can plug and play into all of these experiences that we are creating. Both teams are really excited about what we're doing. Um, the reality is like CyberKongs are releasing Genkai as our um, our next edition of IP that we want to release in a gamified manner. I think people should expect big things out of this. Uh, not not just a badass profile picture on Ronin being the first uh, non-Axie um, NFT to, to launch on there. You know, uh, I think people should expect what it is. I think most people are thinking when they think of Cyberkongs, Ronin, play and collect, gaming, you can draw your own conclusions there. Yeah, there is much more. And look, we want to create an ecosystem. We ha with N with Web3, we have this ability to create, to create this interoperable ecosystem. To, to me, interoperability is maybe the most exciting part of all of NFTs, all of Web3s, having assets that you can use across games, maybe across platforms. I, w I was going to finish by asking for predictions about you know the NFT space over the next five years. I don't think anybody really knows. What I, what I do know, though, is I, I think it's going to be... Axie, Ronin, CyberKongs, I think it's you're all going to be at the forefront of it. So that'll be my prediction here. Um, but I just want to thank you both for joining so much. Uh, I'd love to have you back sometime, see how, see how the new partnership is going, see what you're working on. So let's definitely do this again.